Chapter 39 of Your Psychic Powers and How to Develop Them Recording by Alex Karaz Your Psychic Powers and How to Develop Them by Harroward Carrington Chapter 39 Spirit and Thought Photography Spirit photographs are based on the belief that there is a spiritual body resembling in appearance the physical body, which is sufficiently solid to be photographed by means of the camera and sensitive plates. Usually more than this is necessary namely the presence of a medium or psychic, possessing the peculiar power of rendering the spiritual body apparent to the camera. The medium seems to act as a sort of connecting link or intermediary between the body and the photographic plate, though the exact nature of the mediumistic influence is as yet unknown. Here is a field for study by expert photographers and by scientists to ascertain its limits and extent. How Spirit Photography is Possible to many, it may appear incredible that any spiritual body is sufficiently material to be photographed by the camera, for it would mean that this body is capable of reflecting light waves, this being the primary necessity in obtaining photographs at all. Yet, as Sir Oliver Lodge has pointed out, there is hardly anything more incredible in this than in taking the photograph of the reflection of an object in the mirror, which is quite possible. In this case, there is no solid object photographed, merely the reflected light waves which are themselves intangible and invisible. We know from experiment that the photographic camera is far more sensitive than the human eye. Physicians tell us that it is possible to photograph an eruption on the body before it actually occurs, that is, before it is visible to us, such as smallpox. On the other hand, it is also possible to photograph thousands of stars in the heavens which are invisible to the eye, even with the most powerful telescope. A photographic plate can therefore detect objects insensible to the eye, and hence it is reasonable to suppose, insomuch as spiritual bodies doubtless exist, but are just beyond the range of our vision, that the camera should be quite able to detect them, and spirit photographs are the result. Two sources of error and how to guard against them. In obtaining spirit photographs, you must be on your guard against two possible sources of error. The first is that you are liable to see faces and likenesses in the photographs which do not really exist at all. You construct them in imagination as you would faces in a coal fire. The second danger to be avoided, if you are dealing with a professional spirit photographer, is that of fraud. There has doubtless been much trickery in this department in the past, and if you wish to be sure that you are not victimized, you should take your own plates with you, see them inserted in the camera, and watch their development after the picture has been taken. Even in this case, you are liable to be imposed upon unless you are very careful. How to begin your development The most satisfactory course to pursue is to experiment yourself and not depend upon a professional spirit photographer for your results. If you are at all sensitive and persevering, you will doubtless obtain genuine spirit photographs at the end of a certain period of time. Many hundreds of persons have done so, and there is no reason why you should not, if you are determined to obtain them. The best method is to sit privately with a friend of yours who is both sympathetic and more or less mediumistic and hold a short seance, seated at the table before you begin your experiments in photography. If you obtain messages by means of tippings of the table, raps, automatic writing, etc., so much the better. And if intelligent communication is thus established, ask your spirit friends to appear for you on the plate when the experiments are being held. They may promise to do so, but fail to appear. Do not be discouraged by this, as they may be perfectly willing to help you, but for some reason or another are unable to make their forms visible on the photographic plate. If you persist, however, you will doubtless obtain interesting results in a short time. How to take the photographs. After this preliminary seance, you should seat your subject in a chair against a dark background and focus the camera as you would were you taking this picture in the ordinary way. The photographic plate should, if possible, be held by both of you between your hands in the dark room before being inserted in the camera so as to get it impregnated with your magnetism. After he has taken up his position and the camera is properly focused, you should then ask your spirit friends to come and appear on the plate if possible. Do not exercise your will, however, nor think of any special object in particular, nor any person, but make your mind negative. If positive, you are quite likely to obtain thought photographs instead. Ask your invisible helpers to give you some sign, if possible, such as three raps when they are ready to appear, etc. If you obtain these, 
take the picture at once. If not, sit until you get into the requisite mental condition, then take the photograph and afterwards develop it carefully. It is improbable that you will obtain any definite results for the first few experiments, but many do, even from the start, and this is doubtless one of the most promising of all the fields of psychic investigation for the student to enter. Radiographs and how to obtain them. The next thing to do is to endeavor to secure photographs of the rays or aura of the human body. These impressions on the photographic plate are secured comparatively rarely for the reason that the body of the subject must become radioactive to some extent before an impression of this kind is possible. Such pictures are consequently called radiographs, and a number of these have been obtained by Dr. Chorovich of Poland. The rays in question which impress the photographic plates in such cases seem to emanate from the etheric double and not from the physical body, for the reason that they do not follow the anatomical distribution of the nerves of the body. The double, detached after the manner described in Chapter 26, can often affect the plates in this way, and spirits can do so, but it is not common for the human body to be able thus to affect them. How to Obtain Thought Photographs the third and most interesting phase, in a sense, for the experimenter is that of thought photography. The most sensitive plates that can be procured should be used for this purpose and the experiment conducted in the dark, as indeed should the radiograph experiments. The plate may be held between the palms of the hands or placed against the forehead or over the solar plexus next to the skin and must be left there for a considerable time, half an hour or longer, if possible. During this time, the subject should think intensely of a certain figure or object, such as a cat, a chair, a ship, as the case may be. He should keep this before his mind vividly and intensely, and never allow it to become blurred or indistinct. Holding it there by an effort of will, he should next endeavor to impress this upon the photographic plate, and should also try to feel inwardly the process going on within him the flow of the magnetic current to the spot beneath the plate, etc. Another way to produce thought photographs. Another way of obtaining thought photographs is to place a plate wrapped in black paper or placed in an opaque black envelope on the table and over it place the fingertips for some time, usually from five to ten minutes. Then think or will that a certain thought or image will be impressed upon the plate. And if you are at all developed along this line, the impress will be left on the plate through the paper. Any object can be selected, a round ring of light, a triangle, a face, etc. It is best to begin with simple objects because the mind seems to be able to impress this upon the plate more readily and clearly than a more complex object, of which it cannot form so clear an outline. You must not be disappointed if you do not succeed at first in this and you may have to develop, and thus spoil, a number of plates before you get any impression at all upon them. The first thing you will get, probably, will be a spot of light, or a series of small spots, as the fluid finds its way through the opaque paper onto the plate. You must remember that the human fluid is the instrument, or intermediary, through which photographs of this character are made, and hence you must learn the art of the projection of this fluid, as outlined in the chapter devoted to physical phenomena, before you can hope successfully to impress a photographic plate. Once you have done so, the rest will be simply a matter of development, and you will find it one of the most interesting and fascinating subjects for the investigation in the whole realm of psychics. Photographs of Psychic Forms and Emotions In many cases, photographs of emotions have been successfully taken, especially of late, and M. Doguet has narrated a number of experiments of this character to the French Academy of Sciences, which has accepted his report as authentic. It is thus evident that thought photography has at length claimed a place in the scientific world, and this being so, it is only a matter of careful experimenting on the student's part before he obtains photographs of his character. An interesting series of experiments might be tried by the scientifically minded inquirer namely to obtain photographs of mediums in trance, while they are obtaining automatic writing, crystal gazing, etc., and also of those who are on the point of dying. Such experiments would doubtless reveal many changes in the aura, and also the presence of thought images 
and possibly spirit forms which would otherwise be quite unsuspected by those present. End of chapter 39 Recording by Alex Caraz.